So hello everybody, welcome. Uh, my name is Gonzalo Polaya, as you can see on the slide. I'm a man member of the Czech Pirate Party. Uh, I'm number two candidate of the Czech Pirate Party in the European elections that will be held in May. And I will try to make you think twice about financing political parties. So let's get started. First of all, uh, I have lost the game. So hello to everyone who lost the game too. Oh, <laughs> screw you. <laughs> Be it here or on the internet. So why uh, political parties need money? That is the first question to answer when we want to think about financing political parties. So, first of all, some mandatory fees. Uh, the, uh, let's say, there are difference in, differences among countries, but usually uh, the parties are required to pay a fee when they register, for instance. They may even be required to pay for uh, participating in the elections, like, for instance, in the Czech Republic. We have to pay like 10,000 euro, I think, for uh, being able to participate fully in the uh, international elections. Uh, in some countries, maybe uh, they might be required to pay annually uh, for still being registered as a political party. So, one of the examples. Uh, the political parties need some infrastructure, right? Uh, they probably need to run some web, they need to uh, have some infrastructure for their internal communications, emails, uh, they, like for instance the Czech Pirate Party has a, uh, has a forum for internal com communication so that we can discuss stuff. Uh, maybe some telephony, voice IP. Uh, we might also want to have an office where we can meet, we, we can have physical meetings, uh, and we probably need some space where to store our flags uh, and other kind of stuff we need for doing our campaigns. That all costs money. Uh, operational costs, so like phone, phone calls cost money, sending letters, traveling of uh, traveling, the, the members need to travel for uh, conferences like this, for instance. Uh, you need some uh, resources to move your, your stuff. You might want to have even employees, right? Uh, you, for instance, uh, might want to have assistants for your party leaders so that they no longer do uh, administrative stuff like taking care of s taking the letter and going with the letter to the post office because the assistant can do that. Now, uh, the political parties need to do their assemblies, be it general assemblies like this one. Uh, from the German Pirate Party where like over 2,000 members are on the assembly uh, or be it regular, uh, much more frequent local assemblies uh, that the local pirates want to do in order to discuss things. That all costs money. Foreign Affairs, uh, hosting conferences. Uh, like this picture is from, oh, it's not very visible, but this picture is from uh, from Prague, uh, the Pirate Party's International Conference, uh, the, the General Assembly in 2012, I think. Yep. Uh, and so you might want to have some keynote speakers there, like Cory Doctorow over here. Uh, his flight tickets cost money. Uh, uh, you need to have money to attend other conferences that someone else um, uh, makes. And 
you need money for international collaboration. Like the Czech Pirate Party wants to collaborate with the German pirates. And they spend their money on that. Very important thing uh, to do when you are a polit political party is uh, doing expert analysis. It's, uh, it's your core work, actually. If you want to have a political statement or something, you have to understand the issue. Uh, so you want to write some law proposals, for instance, uh, law amendments. Uh, you want to run some surveys or polls in order to understand what people think. Uh, that all costs money, and it's very important for that uh, for your political work. I think it's the core core thing. You need. Uh, Training. You need to train yourself, uh, be it in the, uh, be it in, in in your core political agenda, like being trained in the expert fields about how things in agriculture work, or stuff like that, uh, or uh, be it your soft skills, how to negotiate, or anything like that, or you can. You want to tr educate and train yourself uh, in order to be able to do your political work. But you also uh, might be interested in educate others about issues that they don't really completely understand. Like running information campaigns, informing people about something that is not uh, really visible in the society and you think that this is important. Sometimes uh, the, uh, let's say, the way how you approach politics might be controversial. Like the Czech Pirate Party decides uh, from time to time to do provocative stuff that is on the edge of law to promote their point of view. So if we say uh, linking is not a crime, we run a linking server with a lot of embedded movies in that and saying embedding a, a movie is like a linking a movie, it's the very same. And when you link a movie, it's not a crime. You did not upload anything anywhere, you just point. Right there, there is a movie. You can watch it if you want. Uh, this is clearly uh, on like very controversial topic because there are organizations that want to claim that that this is a crime that you cannot embed a movie in your uh, in your web page and that you should be punished so uh, there's a high probability that you will stand in court and you need to pay lawyers you need to pay the fees uh, and well if you lose you have to pay the, pay the, 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 the fines and that happens you need some PR stuff. Pirate t-shirts, hoodies, any kind of dress, pants, flags, pins, buttons, stickers, anything. We can think of ton, tons of things. You need to do your political campaign. So you can have billboards like this one that is again not really visible. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, billboards uh, of the Czech Pirate Party uh, in an informational campaign about uh, about the European uh, of the consultation of the European Commission on uh, copyright reform. Uh, you want to run some demonstrations probably when uh, the European Parliament is going to uh, vote on ACTA, for instance. You want it to be voted down. Uh, flash mobs, uh, you, you want to shoot some movies, for instance, uh, have flyers, brochures, anything. So, 
uh, we would be probably able to think of another tons of different things that political parties need money for. And it's pretty obvious that uh, lack of financial resources for the political party is a problem. So it, it's a common problem of uh, emerging parties. I have no idea from which political parties you are, from which uh, uh, country, but uh, when you started your party, you probably experienced the problem in the very same way as we did. It's, it, it's a huge problem how to promote your ideas when you have no money. Right? So you need to think about some income sources. So let's see how we can fund uh, the political <coughs> party so that they can do their political uh, activity. Why I have this slide here upside down and over here it's correct? I don't know. So, uh, <laughs> membership fee is a pretty usual thing. Uh, like, does every pirate party of your particular. <coughs> no, you don't have membership fee in Sweden. Okay. In, not in Spain. We do not in Belgium. Okay. But it's one euro a year minimum. Okay, <laughs> yeah, uh, that's what I wanted to address. So a membership fee is a pretty usual thing. Some of them don't require that. Uh, and it could be either flat and it could be voluntary. So I think that the advantages and disadvantages are kind of obvious here. If, you, if the membership fee is too, too high, then you put a barrier for people that are poor and want to join your political discussion. Uh, if uh, you put that fee too low, then you might have financing problems. Uh, if you make it voluntary, then you kind of uh, think that your members are reasonable and would give you uh, a, a reasonable amount of money. Right? I, I can give you a figure of that. Oh, that. Ah, so okay. in Belgium, the minimum amount is one euro a year, and uh, usually people gi give 11 euro a month. So, okay. if you ask them whatever, they will give you lots of money. <laughs> yes. Sweden, there's no fee, but a lot of people donate 10 euros a month or something okay. like that. Okay, cool. It's easier to donate if you don't have any at all. Okay, so thanks for the examples. I, uh, I will repeat it for the stream. In France, it's uh, 42, no, uh, 24, 24 euros a year. Mm -hmm. And it's possible for unemployed and students to be free. Uh, okay. So I will repeat it for the stream. So uh, in France, it's 24 uh, euro per uh, year flat fee, but for unemployed and students, it could be low, lower to zero. Uh, in uh, Sweden, it's zero, but people donate like 10 euro per month. And in Belgium, it's one euro per year at minimum, but people usually uh, pay a membership fee like 11 uh, per month. Yep. And in Switzerland, it's 35 Swiss francs per year at the minimum, which is spread between the local section and the national uh, parties, mm -hmm. and then people can donate above that, either to the section or to the national party. Okay, so 35 per year in Switzerland. Okay. Swiss francs. Switzerland. Which is, which is 30, 30 euros. Yeah, 30 euros. Okay. Oh, and yeah, in, in Italy, in Italy, it's uh, from five euros up. Most people pay, pay ten euros a year, and uh, well, and then it gets difficult because we don't have so many exciting donations. Okay, so maybe we should change strategy. Yeah. I hope that was on the stream. You're close to the microphone, so I won't repeat it. <laughs> uh, well, so uh, in the Czech Republic, uh, we had in the past five hundred crowns, which is like, how much is 500 crowns? I think it's 20 euros. 20 euros. 20 euro. okay. So it's like 20 euro. Uh, it was 20 euro per year, but lately we changed that into something lower or even zero, I don't know. Uh, no, it's uh, 10 euro. Uh, 10, 10 euro. 10 euro. Okay. And uh, you 10. can volunteer. Okay. So, so now it's 10, 10 euro minimum and you can uh, have to voluntarily pay more. 
So one of the, the income sources. Of course, depending on your uh, um, how huge your membership uh, base, uh, your member base is, then you will get that money from that. Right. So another obvious income source, I think all of them are obvious, uh, is uh, donations, right? So people will donate. There are, again, different types of donations. You can have, you can encourage people to continuously donate, like those 10 euro per month, uh, put, put an order to your bank to send 10 euro per month uh, to the party. Uh, then you can have raising campaigns uh, for a particular project, like uh, we want to run this campaign uh, for reforming copyright, and we need money for that, please send us and rerun uh, uh, a fundraising campaign. Uh, and then it's, I think, pretty important to think about where those donations come from. So they can either come from a natural person, the citizens, or from a legal person, the, the, the companies. And I think it's very important to think about should we allow the companies to donate to the political parties? I'll try to address that later. Okay. Um, and then from the state, right? Um, you can either get unconditionally from the state, like every year you will get a donation. Uh, I haven't seen anything like that. Me neither. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, per member, I haven't either seen anything like that. Uh, but those three, uh, there are, I think, pretty common. Oh, yeah. That, that is working actually in Germany and in, in Switzerland. Is as soon as you are elected into a lender or, or a national level, yes, you get subsidized either jobs or uh, pauschal money uh, to to support your political activity mm -hmm. um, per the number of mandates and per. Um, number of, of um, assemblies in which you have represented the city. Yes, uh, it's very similar in the Czech Republic. Same so so uh, uh, you get, in the Czech Republic, you get uh, money per vote. So you get like uh, four euro, I think, three to four euro per one vote if you get over 1.5% in the national elections the power that's good so so you get so uh, this uh, by this way the, the the Czech pirate party got like 13.5 million crowns which is like uh, 200,000 euro 200,000 euro <laughs> We have a call. So, uh, <laughs> for which so in the meantime, which result have you done? Sorry, which result have you done on the election? Uh, we got uh, two point sixty-six okay. percent, and then we get per vote. So we we got like a one. So 520,000. So 500, <coughs> 500,000 euros. A lot of money. Okay. Uh, then we get so it's per vote. per election result. So if we, for instance, in the Czech Republic, if we get over three percent, then we get even more for the election result. Uh, we get a, 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 like a sustaining uh, donation every year if we get over 3%, which we did, right? Uh, and then you get per mandate. So we, we also got some money for our senator that we got elected two years ago or something like that. So 
this is how it works. And now let's think about regulation. Um, we have some needs for financial resources. Uh, we have some ways how to finance the political parties. And now depending on how the regulation look like, it's, I think it's obvious that it will form the, the, uh, the political environment in, uh, in the country. So let me show some ex examples. Uh, so the financing models are definitely strongly uh, affected by regulation uh, and so that it can influence even the political program of the pirate, uh, sorry, of the political parties uh, and the way how they do PR. So let's think about extreme situations like you get no money from the state. Uh, this is my favorite example. Uh, this is excluding some uh, some uh, political parties from politics completely. So think about a country with huge unemployment rate, like in Spain, for instance, and you have a political party that arises that has a solution for that problem. But how do they get fund? if their voters and their supporters are those who are unemployed. They are with money. Uh, and then uh, the, the second problem is that they are completely dependent on donations. So they can be influenced by uh, those who donate. If you get too much money from the state, then the parties are then completely dependent on the state, which again, means that those who are in power and actually control the state in a way, they might tend to set the, uh, the environment in that way that they will stay in the power because they get money from that. And they are becoming money machines. So uh, another extreme, uh, no donations, uh, parties dependent on the state, uh, no regulation of, of, of donations. So, if you don't regulate uh, the donations anyhow, then uh, it's very, I think, probable that the parties will become influenced by those who donate. So, you will have a corporation coming to a political party, and even if you have a political system like in the United States, for instance, that you have two major uh, political parties, then it's very easy for the corporations to go to the political parties and influence them. So, fine. When should I finish? 15 minutes. Okay. Um, so, how to regulate, and this is like my, uh, my personal view, and this is uh, what I'd like you to think twice about. So, I think that legal persons should not be allowed to donate to political parties. Because political parties are here for the citizens. The legal persons, aka the companies, they are not people, they are not persons. They are a, an artificial instrument that we created in order that society uh, works in certain aspects. But they are not the primer, uh, primary uh, aim of the political parties that they, they, they should like work for. They should do their political work for natural persons. So I don't see a reason why a corporation uh, having, having a branch in the Czech Republic, uh, having a legal person in the Czech Republic should be able uh, and based in, I don't know, uh, United States, for instance, why they should be able, allowed to donate to a, a Czech political party. I can see no reason for that. Uh, uh, I think that there should be some, some maximum limit of donation per person, so that not a single person can come and donate like two billion crowns or two million euros or something like that. So, 
which some people might be able to do so. Um, and I also think that we should regulate how public money are spent, especially in uh, uh, like being transparent, so that both income and outcome is transparent. So both how the political party get uh, the uh, their financial resources, which is rather like for the uh, for the donations, not for getting from the state because then it's obvious. And also outcome, how do we spend our money? But I also think that they should be regulated in a way how they sh are allowed to spend public money that are getting from the state. Uh, it, it happens pretty often, I don't know about your countries, but in the Czech Republic, that the political parties get a tons of financial resources from the state as I uh, gave you the example, we get a very low uh, percentage, 2.66, which is good for an emerging movement, but if you compare it to other political parties, you get like 30%. You can imagine that they have a completely different financial resources getting from the state. And if I take the money and throw them into billboards that does not actually bring any value, any added value for the citizens, and just convince them that they should vote for them again, you are creating financial machines uh, from the political parties and their motivation is uh, not their real political work, but to increase their money income from the state, which I think is really, really bad. So now, uh, how the Czech Pirate Party decided to, to regulate itself. So I will now speak about internal regulations of the Czech Pirate Party. In order to prevent corruption and motivation by income increase. Uh, decisions taken in order to, in, to, to increase income. So uh, this is a nice example uh, of the picture that you cannot see. Uh, it's a billboard. It's a, a billboard of a uh, Christian people's aliens. Uh, uh, aliens. Uh, I don't know which from which Alliance. country. Alliance. Okay. So they are not alien. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's uh, from I don't know which which country is that. But uh, it says liberal democrats and. Greens can do it, so vote for the Christian Democrats. Well, that's a, a wonderful message, but I have no idea what, how, what, how beneficial is that for the society. Uh, so you can have billboards like that, but uh, you also can have a different kind of billboards like the one that uh, I showed you before that you didn't see either, either which was informing uh, the people about the current uh, public consultation of the European Commission on reforming copyright, saying, hey, citizen, uh, there is this public consultation happening and you can influence how copyright will look like in the next decades, which is a billboard campaign uh, run by the Czech Party Party government. Uh, I think that you see the difference, right? Uh, and we also see the difference in the numbers because uh, the, 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 the usual rate of response for the public consultation of European Commission is like 300 or something like that. And uh, like the information that I have like two weeks or one week ago from the European Commission is like that uh, they, they are already like 8,000 responses for this particular public consultation. So you see that, that and, and there is like, oh, more than half of them is from uh, uh, a, a, an initiative of the pirate parties uh, from Europe. So not, here you can see how the political parties can influence participation of citizens in politics, which I think is very important, or how they can just put stupid billboards that do not say anything, just vote for me, right? Uh, Transparency. So we have a transparent bank account, so everyone can see every single item on our bank account, incoming, outcoming. 
<clears throat> some might say, and I think it's even illegal in Germany, I would say, uh, some might say that, that this is breaking privacy of those who donate. But I think we should think about what is more important, the privacy of the people who donate, or the transparency that we know who donated and what might be the influence of that political party. There is also the Belgian compromise. Yep. Uh, well, to uh, end, get to, to can, can we leave it for the Q, Q, QA session? Sure. Uh, I'm coming to an end. Okay. So, and we have a, a transparent accounting. So our like accounting is public for anyone. So and this is my last slide. Um, uh, we have additionally uh, a regulation that how to work with money that we got from the state. So like those uh, half a million euro that we got, for instance. Uh, so we can use it only for fees paid to the state that I mentioned in, uh, in, in the beginning, like paying, paying a fee for, being, uh, for, for participating in the elections, for instance. Uh, we can use it for a service uh, for the public, like this billboard that is uh, perhaps a bit more visible, which is the same that I spoke about already. Uh, so doing information campaigns, for instance, flyers, <coughs> uh, printing brochures, informing the, uh, uh, the, like the public about that something is happening. Some extraordinary uh, activities with, with international impact, like hosting conferences, attending conferences, international conferences, and stuff like that. Uh, and it cannot be used for, unless it already fits in one of the above, for generic flyers, banners, uh, and, or, and regular administrative costs. So, that's it. Uh, credits for the pictures. Um, questions? Well, you, you said, you showed us the transparent bank account. Um, I think it is important to think about what this can do to the donators. Um, as you said, the uh, um, privacy of the donators is um, a concern to some, but I think it's really important because your employer will be uh, politically interested as well in some time. So um, in Germany, we set a limit to what you can <laughs> donate and stay anonymous. I think this is a good compromise between that. Okay. Everything else gets public, and uh, so we know we have no big influence. I see. OK. Uh, that's an interesting idea, actually. So uh, I'll just repeat for the screen. So uh, the situation in Germany is that there is a limit that you can uh, uh, you can donate up to in order to stay anonymous above that you have to be transferred. What's the limit? Um, the limit is actually, I don't know, for uh, our national party, I don't know it, but in our local branch we have uh, 100 euros at, as cap, so... <coughs> in Belgium we were very fan of the Czech system and uh, Jonas finally managed to do it. So now when we tip finance the private party the PE, we have also it. Uh, and uh, what we decided, we decided to put uh, the first letter of human and surname. Uh, and also we have a law uh, that say that if we if you give more than uh, 125, uh, it cannot be anonymous anymore. So it makes sense if it's more than 125 because we need, it cannot be anonymous. Then we need to publish it. But to see the in and the out and the out when you speak about transparency in so much years. You know, for me it's very important, uh, and it was very important for most of the parrots in Belgium to see this fucking in and out. Uh, to see, yes, we have nobody paying, and since it's transparent, people pay. You know, because they want to appear. <laughs> <laughs> the parrots, you know, the parrots want to. <laughs> yeah. And also for the below board, I, uh, I admit that uh, to put a face is a nonsense and to put this crappy bullshit that we see since 20 years is that's nonsense, but to communicate about what happened, like this inquiry of this, um, there are every time in a European incentive 
we communicate about, for example, there is one about wheat, there was one about basic income, there is always something to communicate to citizens, and that's a very good idea to use this money to do that. You mentioned the regulations, and they, you didn't want your donations from legal persons. Mm -hmm. But I see this as very hard to separate what is a legal person and what is uh, a normal person. Because as a legal person, for example, if you have your own company, that would be your interest as well. So oh. that would be mixed with your personal interests and your legal interests. And sure. How can you separate? But, yeah. Okay. So, so okay. So the the question is, if you run your own company, uh, then you are kind of a natural person and a legal person too. But uh, I would say you have your interests, of course, mm -hmm. and it's pretty okay uh, to have your own interests and start uh, convincing others about your ideas. That <coughs> saying that in the field of energy that your business runs in, things should be like this and that because your business model is like this and that and the society like has benefits from that how you run your business. But I still don't think that you should not be allowed to uh, donate as the company. If you want to do so, well, you earn money as a uh, 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 as a natural person that you are making from your business. Well, take them, and that's perfectly okay. Uh, also, you are a citizen of, of, of the country that runs the business, and I think it's, it's, it's in the interest of every country to have small businesses, entrepreneurs. And they are, like, it's completely okay if they, thank you, if they, uh, in, like, if they use their money to support the political ideas. Right, but I see no reason why they are legal persons, which are artificial entities built on top of them, should be able to do so. Um, I think what's important to see is that if you have a donation from a company, you see the name and there comes a certain implication with it. So politicians might feel obligated to further your cause. If you donate as the owner of this company, to in really influence them, you'll have to come to them and tell them. And then a responsible politician will slap you in the face and nothing will happen. <laughs> so I, I'm sorry I, I was out for, for some personal reasons, so I didn't watch all your presentation, but I know there are uh, different national regulations and laws uh, some coherent, some historic, very established, so on. The question for you is, uh, what is your idea about financing political life and political party? Some ideal way, not a real way. What would be the best? So, no, what it is, but what would be the best way to finance political activity? What do you think? I have summarized it over here a bit, so I think no donations from legal persons. Uh, limit, a maximum limit for donations uh, per natural person. Uh, regulate the way how the political parties can spend your money uh, if they come from the state. If, if they come from the state, it should be uh, somehow restricted how they can use it and uh, transparency. So basically the, these ideas. And uh, own business? What a party can do uh, as, yeah. as his own business to make money. Is it possible? Yes. <laughs> you can mine money. Huh? You can mine money. You, you can <laughs> mine, yeah, that's nice. <laughs> Oh, yeah, so um, I'm saying you need to create our own yeah. money. You're joking, really. Uh, you can uh, mine money. Uh, yeah, sure. Bitcoin. <laughs> Could be that right. Bitcoin. Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, pirate coin. Oh, yeah. I, I got it. Pirate, pirate, pirate coin. Yeah, pirate coin. Yeah, but what that would really, really be in the, in the DNA of the pirate coin. Yeah, I want pirate coin. Yeah. To, to sell finance by creating money. Okay. There is a right uh, of pirate I think that they should be somehow allowed to make money like selling merchandise or something like that. That I think it's. 
completely okay. If you look at current parties, in all, in all countries, if you look at their wealth structure, they have real estate, they have consulting companies, they have printing companies, they have logistics companies, they have media consultancy companies, they have newspapers in their asset list. So saying that you see funding as being, or external funding, either through state or through, through, um, through donation as being the key resources, the current parties do not consider the key resources being the donations or, or the state funding, even though it's very nice, it's very appealing. But when you buy real estate, prime real estate in Frankfurt, and you, know, you, own, you own half a block, you imagine the revenue that a party is getting? No. And, and that's what is currently happening in München, in Berlin, in, in Frankfurt, in Bonn. It is not only for, for, for right-wing parties. Left-wings do that, do that well, even better. Even better, actually. Yes, because it's not about political work, right? No, but it's about it's because you turn means yeah. to do politics. And they have created their own economic structure to do that. They don't rely on external subsidies to be able to, to live. When, when Daniel said, we can mine money, yes, we could. Yes, we could set up a few rigs and data centers and have the people here could do that with one hand tied in the back and, and hopping around on a Sunday morning after a, a very long night uh, Having fun. <coughs> it, is, it is going beyond the fact that we need certain elements. It is how do, we, do, how do we consider the economics of politics to develop ourselves and not just say these are cost centers? There are people living off of consultancy work. Liberals or, or, or FDP in Switzerland, they have their own consultancy firm that does consulting for the, the, the big companies in Switzerland on prospective thinking. Guess how much money they get at the end of the month and how much gets in, in the, the war chest of the party. And it is fully legal and fully compliant. What in prevents, Switzerland? Yes. It is within, within what the law allows for political parties to do. Liberals had real estate, in, in terms of wealth, it's, it's beyond 200 million Swiss francs across the country. The Swiss uh, Social Party, and socialists, they are about 120 million. Communists, I believe they are about 75 million worth of real estate. So, considering financing of parties, I think that we are just scratching the surface with our own experience, our own eyes, not looking at what is really happening just next to us and what are the powerhouses envisioning in terms of how they finance, how they get investment. Yes, they don't. They are very conservative with their money. They don't spend it and they don't gouge in, 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 in doing huge advertising campaigns. But with the wealth they have, they can sustain that for many decades. And if you look at, at liberals or FDPs, which are right now declining in all countries, they can still be there. Because what they have in terms of own finance, not a lot of dollars, we would be dreaming of, of equity. Of equity and assets. We would be dreaming of for, for, for decades. <coughs> but this is exactly like what to think about, how to regulate political parties. It so is, it is regulated. But that's, uh, that in Spain is completely forbidden. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's completely forbidden in Spain. In they Spain, don't have t-shirts. Yeah, but do you, can you have consultancies that are financing the party? No, you have to cheat the system for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, 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 is it not allowed to have real estate? No, no, no. Yeah, well, I think so, but uh, the, the Spanish political parties are based on debt. So uh, they belong to the banks, actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, that's another way to see it. <laughs> so you're financed by the banks. So, so I, I put I put my question uh, uh, once 
uh, what would be ideal to finance in the past. And, and uh, only public uh, money? No, no private money? No, no, not at all. Not at all. Uh, that's, uh, it might be because you, you were not here for the whole... Uh, but I, I, like, I came through that, uh, all those questions, like, what does it cost if we have no, no private money? What does it, uh, what, what does it uh, cost when we don't have any private money? What does it cost when we don't donate from the state? So, uh, I don't think I'm going to repeat that because we're okay. running out of time. Uh, but we can have a discussion. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So, thank you.